Ah folks, welcome back to Doughboy's Garage. Now, first video of some modification of the Bandit. So, we're going to start simple. I've been out and gone and purchased myself some Renthal bars. Everybody loves Renthals, they just the best. And these are brilliant. These are the Renthal Ultra Low, or Road Bike Ultra Low, Superbike Ultra Low, call them what you like. They're kind of meant for a road bike. You can get the motocross bars with the daft brace across. Great for a motocross bike, but stupid on a bandit. So these bars, there's too much of a kink here. And this angle of about 40 odd degrees, it's too much. Kind of twists in, digs in the heel of my hand, not comfortable. They're way too narrow as well. These are about inch and a half wider and a little bit less on the angle, plus they're lower. They only rise about inch and a quarter, which is great. So got them, 25 quid on eBay from Demon Tweaks. Best price, free postage as well. Excellent. And I only bought them yesterday morning, and they turned up this morning. Excellent service, guys. Well done. So I'm going to swap these over, and it's ever such an easy job. Right, first of all, it really is easy to change a set of bars. It really is. It's not, it's not difficult at all, and loads of you are going, what are you making a video of that for? Really and honestly, I wonder myself, but I have had a few mates have taken their bikes to the dealer to have the bars changed, and I can't understand that. It's as easy as this. A few tools you need, just the tools you need to get the bits and bobs off your handlebars. Spanner to take mirrors off, little picky pick one to get the little caps off, a couple of Allen keys, screwdrivers, big fat one to get the bar in weights out, and the all important strong Allen key, handy to put it in one of these because that's the one to do up your clamps to get them straight. And a little 8 mil socket to undo your clamps for the levers. Obviously you need your new bars. And a really nice important thing. bit of blanket, sheet, this is gold curtain. Charity shop, one pound. One pound. And it saved so much. These are dust sheets, all sorts. Hold it over, cover everything up. All right, because you're going to put tools all over it and drop tools and scrape things. Just saves your body work. First job. Next thing, just going to whip mirrors off. Okay. And then, whip your bar in weights out. These can get real stuck. Real stuck. Next thing, I'm going to take levers off. So, a little flat electric screwdriver, if you've got any of these caps, and gently get it in underneath and just whip them off. Just lever them out. Try not to scratch anything. Now these are on their connections, you do not need to disconnect any of the hydraulics or electrics or anything, it's just not necessary. You'll see they just hang on their cables. Oh, uncool. Okay little collar there, you'll need that for your renthals. Do the upside. Okay, as you can see, they just hang on there. There's a little plug there, which is the wires for your brake light, and it goes into your loom. So obviously, just to preserve that, gently take it off, so that the wire doesn't get wrenched out. And that can just sit there like that and hang on its hose. Don't do any harm at all whatsoever. Screwdriver, switch blocks off. If you're concerned about losing screws or if you're not sure where they go or remembering where they go, a little trick on here, look, on the tail. Just pop the screws under your rail or something like that. Just use a bit of common sense. Whatever it is that works bit of cardboard with a hole in, stick them in and put a pen and mark what they are, whatever it takes. A bit of common sense and you won't lose the screws and forget what goes where. This is the throttle side, switch block comes undone, but looking in here, there's the actual throttle cables. And we're going to save a little job, I'm not going to undo them, there's just no need. I'll show you a trick in a minute, that's going to stay where it is for now. And on this side, now it's time to get the grip off, because uh, I need the grips. Now again, I've seen people cut these grips off because they're often glued on uh, at, the, at the factory and there's no need. It's a perfectly good grip. I kind of like these Suzuki ones and why cut it and ruin it? There's a little trick. Just use a screwdriver, pop it up inside gently, just a little smooth one. Make sure there's no sharp edges. Push it up inside, up to the hill and just work it round. 
the bar and it just breaks all the glue. And if it really won't give it, and it really won't let go, when that's up, stick your WD-40 tube in there, give it a squirt and it just slips off. Even if it's got glue on it, it will slip off. And in my career, I've yet to ever have a situation where I can't get grips off using this method. Some people insist they have to cut them off, but don't know. As you can see, looking at that, there it is. That's your factory glue. It's pretty nasty stuff, but that's it. It's just rubber, like glued, gungy stuff. And that's how you get them off. And you save a perfectly good grip. I think they're about 25 quid as well. And that's a lot of money. Keep that safe. Right, now we're going to literally take the bars off. Just going to take these little clips out. Or little covers. Take the clamps off. They're not sided or handed, so just use, use your brain to just sit them there neatly. Shouldn't go anywhere. And this is where leaving that in place comes in handy. All you do, once you've got the clamps off, save the screws. Now hold that switch block in place, leave it where it is. And just pull the bar out of it, leaving it there, and you haven't disturbed the cables. That'll just sit there. No need to disturb the cables. You can take them off and put them all back on, but it's fiddly and for no reason. And there it is. And we need that because this is to make. That's obviously uh, the clamp for the brake lever. It's obviously a one-inch clamp. I have no idea why. And to be honest, I've never seen that before, even on a Bandit, but that's it. And that makes it 7 8 so you're going to need that. So let's get the new bars. Just look at the difference here. That's your standard bar, and that's your Renthal. Not only do they weigh half as much, but looking at the size, you can see the difference. This is the Renthal Road Bike Ultra Low. So they're lower by a good uh, inch and a half. They're wider by an inch and a quarter, a good inch and a bit each end, which is going to make your arms stretch wider because you've got gorilla arms like me. And obviously they're lower. And that angle, they sit at a very slightly flatter angle, so they're going to be more comfortable across the board. First job, just reassembly on pretty much anything is the opposite of deassembly. So slide that in first. Don't need lubricant, it's plastic against alloy. That's it, the next thing we did was the clamps, so we'll pop them on, so that's those in. Don't need to do these up too tight because Renthal's are alloy, they have a shiny finish, uh, sorry, a textured finish even, whereas the alloys have that knurling inside, so you don't have to beat them up or lean on them. So let's just get these nipped up and show you the next reasonably important trick. Okay, just a quick thing that is really, really important um, that I just want to mention. When you're putting these on, in the standard bars, just, just get them, there are location holes in the top of the bars drilled by the factory for the switch gear to locate into. And I guess it's really just to stop them rotating, but that's a kind of shiny chrome bar and it will just slip round. These are just plastic. You can't wind them up like the old alley ones from the 80s so that they grip. You just do them up and what they have if you can see here, they have a little plastic button inside which locates into the hole in the bar. These bars don't come with those holes. Now, some guys I've seen fit rentals just drill the holes in, and I guess that's up to them. Personally, I would never even go there. I just wouldn't drill a hole in a handlebar. It's an alloy tube, it's not steel. Steel is far more malleable and resilient than alloy. Alloy tends to crack. And uh, although these are incredibly strong and resilient, I don't know, I just don't want to drill holes in them. And considering the trade-off between having the possibility that your plastic switch block might move a bit and having a weak handlebar, it's obvious which is the best choice. So what I tend to do with these, as you can see, there's the button. It's just a little moulded piece of plastic. On the other side, I've already done this one, here. Just file it off with a round file. That's all I do, just file them down. Leave it a tiny, tiny bit proud and it presses on here. And again, this is a textured surface so it will grip and that's fine. It does up okay and it doesn't move. 
There is a method if it moves. Just bung a little bit of tin foil underneath it and that'll bite it and it'll hold. So I'm just going to get filing on this. Which is ever so simple, you just take a half round file, open it up, don't stress the wires too much. Carefully does it, put your finger the other end to steady it. And just without making sure that you're not rubbing anything else and filing anything else off, just file on the face of that little button and it takes about five minutes. As you can see it's already going through, just to file that through. And there it is. That's it pretty much filed out, nice and easy. Just leave a tiny bit of it there because that, that just use that as to grip because uh, this is a clearance fit. So all that does then is pops back on the bar and when you do that up it will bite nicely. Don't need any holes drilled in anything. Okay, time to start screwing it all together. Just a little tip while we're here, um, there's an electrical connector both sides clutch and brake which connects the switch, the electrical switch, and there is the switch underneath. As you can see, this is quite common. They get a bit scuzzed up with just corrosion because they're copper. So just a spray of this. This is a maintenance spray or WD-40 plus gas. Call it what you want. And then just give that a little clean with a brass wire brush. Clean those terminals up. Just ensures that you get the best contact you can. And then that just pops back in. Okay, then that side on. Remembering to put your collar on. Right, just a quick point, now this is all done up, just leave it all loose for a start. And then when you set it up, just use the length of the grip. I should have put that on in a minute, very simple way. And a little trick with that is add a glue and back on. Check that for length or wherever you want it. That's going to be that. Just, just get the screws, just nip them up gently. These plastic threads, just nip them up, literally two fingers on the screwdriver, like that, no more. Don't go leaning on them, you'll just strip them out. That's it, that's all they need. And look at that, don't move at all. So those pins, useless, no need. Same on these, nip them up, just gently. And a little tip on these, these caps, and it's the same as these caps. Everybody pretty much knows this, but if you don't, have never heard it, it's quite important, make sure that the gap either side when you screw it down is the same. Don't have one side touching and then a big gap this side because it won't grip properly and if you do that and you do it up real tight you can actually crack this and, and ruin it. So I'm just going to do that up gently because once you have finished this job you're going to want to get on and adjust everything to set the bars in a comfy position. Okay, that's that pretty much done. Come back to that at the end because it's a little trick to how to glue that on. Let's get stuck into that side. on spray brush. It's a little spark plug brush. The terminals are a little clean. Plug your brake switch back in. If you're at all concerned or worried about how to do it or you think it's a big old ask, what you can do is take a piece of paper and write down all the things that you do in order, marking them one, two, three, four, five. As long as you have a go. And don't just leave it to the dealer. Nothing wrong with a dealer, except the bill they charge you at the end. And for something as simple as this, it's just criminal that you can't do it yourself. Okay, measure that to the end as well. Excellent, pretty much, we're now there. Okay, now, little trick to glue a grip on. Down inside there is a bit greasy and horrid. So a bit of brake cleaner, car cleaner, which is a real good grease cutter. Spray it down inside, let it all drip through, get your finger in, and you can feel it start going squeaky. You're actually just turning the rubber quite soft. The rubber sort of goes a little bit chewy. It seems to melt the rubber slightly and make it a bit sticky, which is exactly what you want. Dry all the rest and all the residue out. Pretty much nothing should come off. 
give that a couple of seconds, brake clean is great, as you probably know if you've ever used it, it just dries away. Now feel that inside and it sort of squeaks inside now. So that's real dry. And all you do, pop it on, rotate like that, and it just goes on a tree. There it is. And in the morning, that pretty much will be stuck. Because the rental bars have got a knurling on there anyway, so that should grip it. And if it doesn't grip tight and it doesn't stay nice and solid, uh, you can always then go revert to the regular glues. Don't use super glue because that will stick to the rubber forever and destroy it and it doesn't work anyway, it cracks. So that's that. Now what we're going to do now is sit on the bike and get everything set and lined up. So let's get into that. Right, everything on the bars is loose. It all moves about at the minute. Everything's loose. So the first thing is to set the bars at the height you want. So sit on the bike, get these little bit loosed off, loosened off, and just sit them where you want them. Don't worry about the levers, just set them where you like them. And then on this top, just looking in here, you see these little tiny marks each side. And you can just set that exact so it's correct side to side. And then again, like I said, make sure this gap here and this side is exactly the same, or as much as you can. Don't do one up till it's butted solid and then leave a gap the other side because it's uh, they won't grip properly. And you don't need to lean on these, you really don't. Unless you've got ape hangers or something, you don't need to do them up much longer than wrist tight. Next thing is levers. Just move them where they feel right, really. Okay, the brake side's quite crucial, getting it right. Make sure they're about the same. Little gap. Make sure that when you do it, the ball comes into the end of the grip. There's no point if the ball's coming in here, because then that part of the lever is adjacent to the grip, so you're getting full four fingers. And there's nothing like that. Just nip it up. Again, it's a thread that goes into your master cylinder. So if you naff that thread up, because you're a ham-fisted monster, then that's a really expensive fix. So just use one hand, put the spanner in your hand, and you haven't got enough purchase. If you come out here, you've got too much purchase and you can't feel it. When it feels tight, don't do it up. If it moves, nip it up a bit. If it don't, it's tight. Right, now it's just the final case of adjusting the switch blocks, just twisting and rotating them around to where they need to be so you can get to all the switches. So all your switches fall easily to hand, as they say in magazines. And then doing the screws up gently. So let's get finished up. And there they are. Rental bars fitted. Obviously you can ride it, come back, decide you want them a bit different, just make the adjustments. And I'm gonna do a little bit of play fun going to just connect this, clip it up out of the way with some extra cable ties. Apart from that, just checking the job over. Any job you do, just check everything over afterwards. Check every fastening you've done. Make sure it's all safe. There it is. Thanks for tuning in and watching Derboy's Garage. See you next time.